The U.S. economy was going through the worst downturn since the Great Depression. Industry slowed. Unemployment rose. The Yom Kippur War was followed by an Arab oil embargo. Americans waited in gas lines, and the price of everything kept rising. Chicago school economists had always argued that rigid government regulations were keeping prices high and fueling inflation. Now more people began to wonder if competition could break the inflationary stranglehold. What is the effect of regulating the airlines? What is the effect of regulating the trucking industry? And what is the effect of regulating the railroad industry? Very often, it raises prices. Instead of uh, allowing competition, it suppresses competition. Number three, number four, uh, is... Uh, in 1962, a Juliet Monitor Tower 126 point enter. You had a 43 heavy, or a 32 left at Mike. We turn left to join Bravo. The Mike 2 and Mike 2 has to move now. In the airline industry, the host of regulations enacted during the Great Depression were still in force. It was a classic example of regulated capitalism. But deregulation was in the air. Stephen Breyer, now a Supreme Court Justice, then a Harvard professor, was asked by Liberal Democratic Senator Ted Kennedy to head a Senate investigation of airline regulations. You discovered that basically the same firms that had been there in 1938 were still there. Uh, those were the major carriers, and nobody knew. The hearings began, and officials from the Civil Aeronautics Board were called to testify. And it turned out that 5% of their time went to stop prices that were too high, and 95% of their time went to stop prices that were too low. But always the effort was to keep the price high and not low. Naturally, the established airlines were quite happy with this arrangement. And we'd say, when was the last time you granted a new route? Well, regulations meant that major carriers like Pan Am never had to compete with newcomers. But some cut-price charter flight operators wanted to break this club. Leading the struggle against Pan Am over its profitable transatlantic flights was an exuberant Englishman called Freddie Laker. I'm Freddie Laker. I own Laker Airways, and I'm dedicated to low-cost air travel. With Laker, you can fly round-trip to the USA or Canada in one of our wide-body DC-10s for less than half the price of a normal economy ticket. Look, I've got to give you a better deal. I've got my name on every plane. And, and the transportation department said that this may hurt Pan Am. And Freddie Laker testified and said, the cause of this whole thing is Panamania. So we said, what is that? And he said, well, everybody should do everything for Pan Am. <laughs> The man who was to sweep away airline regulations is a lifelong Gilbert and Sullivan fan. Improbably enough, the bearded poet is played by Fred Kahn, a professor at Cornell University. Kahn wanted a leaner, meaner regulatory environment in which the market was free to chase profits without the dead weight of bloated government. Democratic President Jimmy Carter made Kahn head of the Civil Aeronautics Board. Kahn had spent years studying government regulation. Now he had a chance to do something about it. And when I got to the Civil Aeronautics Board, the biggest division under me was the division of enforcement. In effect, FBI agents who would go around and seek out secret discounts and then impose fines we we would we would discipline them 
it was illegal to compete in price. That means it was illegal to compete in the discounts you offer travel agents. So we regulated travel agents' discounts. Internationally, since they couldn't cut rates, they competed by having more and more sumptuous meals. We actually regulated the size of sandwiches. By the time Khan had finished, the CAB had nothing left to do but close itself down. Competition's the rule, and because of it, the consumers are better served than ever. Airline deregulation led to painful turbulence as new carriers came and went. Like her father, Judith Hamill works in the airline industry. My dad was a jet mechanic with Branagh. At the age of 59, he found that his skills were no longer desirable or, or, or needed. And when Braniff came back, because of the duty to hire, he came back at half the salary that he had made before. When you give your life and you live by the rules and then the rules change, it's, it's sad. But 20 years later, the industry was employing two times as many people to fly almost three times as many passengers. The industry vastly underestimated the demand at, for airfare at lower prices. And what's happened is that as the prices went down, demand went up dramatically. And once they were free to compete, you began to get super saver fares and super apex fares and potato fares and peanuts fares. And so an explosion of discounting and competition. Well, those were dramatic. The stage was set for deregulation of the U.S. economy. And now these ideas were about to make their entrance in the very homeland of Gilbert and Sullivan. Watch all of Commanding Heights online at pbs.org. This enhanced netcast links to an interactive time map, country reports, economic data, and important full-length interviews about the future world economy. Commanding Heights video set and book are available from WGBH Boston Video. To place an order, please call 1-800-255-9424.